Some other ideas connected to success that I find really helpful. If I'm not being as thoughtful and reflective, I can start to have this list that's just building up in my mind of all the things I want to achieve and do and all the goals I have. But they can all stay in a category of one day, like I'm going to do those at some point. And that leads you into this position again of success or being fulfilled or living in a place of flow, being pushed off into a category of I can't have that now because there's all these other practicalities in the way, but one day I will have that. I would encourage you to use the time that you have after listening to this or watching this to think about if you actually don't let that list just be random and in 50 different places in notes on your phone and bits in your journal and ideas in your mind sit down and capture all those things and list them out whether they're goals whether they're ideas of success whether they're things you you want to do or experience at some point in your life and actually sit with that list because so often When you slow down for a minute and become more conscious of those things on your list of what does success look like, you actually realize that there's no reason why you can't already have heaps of those things in your life right now. We tend to just assume that something's not possible or assume that we're too busy. And yet all of us know, and if any of you are fans of the Uh, Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, like I am, you will know that if you were actually honest with yourself, there's a small percentage, that 20% of the things that you're doing that are achieving 80% of your results. You are wasting a lot of time and energy and effort and thinking on things that you don't actually really even want or need. And so the exercise of starting to take more ownership of what success means for you can also help you come back into that place of starting to look at where you are spending your time, talent, treasure, whatever words you want to use, but where is all of that energy going? And when you have a more conscious idea of what you want for your life, what success means for you, you actually then suddenly realize and become more conscious of all the things you're doing that are not in any way contributing to that and in fact might be taking away from it. And that piece, that exercise in and of itself, that will make you a more strategic leader. Because one of the most beautiful definitions of strategy is that strategy is saying no to good things. There are a whole bunch of things you could be doing, many of which are are actually really good. It's not that they're bad options. But unless you have a way to filter, unless you have a way to assess if something is actually aligned with and moving you towards what you want and what your idea of success is, then you don't have a way to choose what to say yes to and what to say no to. And I see this all the time. I did a podcast on this a little while ago where I was questioning some of the comments that get thrown around in the, particularly in the entrepreneurial space online around telling people that how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Or those types of statements that are very black and white. They're very much on one end of a spectrum. And I will forever be encouraging you to shift out of that type of thinking. Because when you have that approach, or when you say everything is equal, then what it means is, it's a cop out from a leadership perspective, right? Because one of your jobs is to be discerning and is to make judgment calls. You have to, and you are in any given day, making decisions where you say, actually, within the constraints of how how many hours are in this day and what I can get done, I'm prioritizing this piece over this piece. So if we're honest about that, that we're already doing that, wouldn't you rather be making those decisions and filtering based on a more conscious and intentional idea of what success is and what you actually want, 
rather than just being reactionary all the time and letting other people set your priorities for you and letting busyness rob you of the ability to actually live the life you want to lead. In that, I'm not suggesting that it's all easy. In that, there are going to be aspects that are uncomfortable. There are going to be aspects that require you to get more comfortable with being uncomfortable. 